Without a doubt, one of the hugest assets we have in GarageBand is the auto drummer. It is super capable, really fun to work with, sounds great in general, and uh, something I use all the time. However, one of its biggest limitations is the fact that you cannot change the individual drum sounds, right? So you can't really change the snare sound. You can't change the kick drum sound. Or can you? That's what we're gonna talk about today here on GarageBand and Beyond. So we're gonna start out with a project that is only a drummer because that's all I need to show you. Uh, this is the default one that it gave me. This is Austin playing the Roots brush patterns uh, on the Blue Ridge kit, okay? Sounds like this. Perfectly good, right? Now, what if you were like, eh, I like everything, but I don't really like that kick drum because it's a little soft, right? It's a little, eh, it's a little too airy, a little too, th like, it's got a pillow in it or something. You know what I mean? All right, so here's what you're gonna do. Uh, you're gonna do this. You're gonna come down to the mixer. You're gonna disarm the kick drum, okay? Next thing, you're gonna duplicate this track. I'm gonna hit Command and D. Then I'm gonna come back up to the first drummer. I'm gonna copy that. Make sure I'm at the top. Go down here and paste this in. And then I'm going to switch the kit. Uh, from the catalog of drums over on the left. So let's say, let's say scientific method, okay? We like the scientific method kick drum. Now I'm gonna come back down to the mixer for the second drummer and disarm everything but the kick. Check it out. Right, okay, so you're like, oh, all right, cool. That's, that's pretty good, uh, but I don't really like it. Let's try the heavy kick. That's a great kick, love this one personally. Um, same thing, switching the kit in the left, come back down to the mixer and disarm all of the drums we don't need. Now it sounds like this. Right, okay, so that's cool. So what if you were like, eh, that snare stinks too, but I like the hi-hats and the toms. We can just do this if we want this kick and snare. Right, you could easily just turn on the snare in the second drummer, uh, or you can make a whole other track, right? So again, we're gonna come back to the top, we're gonna duplicate this one. We are going to change the kit to, oh, let's say Liverpool, because that's a really noticeable one. Oh, we do have to turn off, oh, we already did. Um, okay, so now it's uh, copy and pasting this. We're copying that, dropping it down here. And now, third drummer, turning off everything we don't need, except the snare, right? So now we have this awesome Liverpool snare. Ah, right? So that's it, okay? So let's um, let's show you though, because you can open up a ton of drummers in GarageBand. This is a total of six individual tracks right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can open up six different drummers. Of course, this will depend on how much RAM you have and what kind of CPU your computer's running. Um, this can get a little heavy on your computer. So if you're running all six, it, it will slow down. I will warn you about that. Um, but in general, this if this shows you anything, it shows that you can really actually change these sounds quite dramatically. Of course, maybe some of these could be a percussion or something like that. Um, but yeah, you could change the toms, you could change the snare, you can change the kick, uh, you can change the cymbals, you could change the hi-hat, right? So that, that that's the majority of it. And here's six channels that you're looking at, and that's five things I just talked about. So voila, people, now you know how to do that, okay? One last thing I want to add to this when it comes to uh, when it comes to mixing the individual drums. Yes, we use these mixers. I use the mixer down here all the time. But sometimes I find that the intensity of the drums, like the snare hits, don't really work for me, okay? So I'm gonna just show you what I do here. I'm gonna create a software track underneath. We just have to remember what kit we're using. And this was Blue Ridge, okay? So I'm gonna create a software instrument track right under it, I'm going to make it that same drum kit, which is the Blue Ridge, right? Then I'm going to, again, copy this, and now I'm gonna drop it into this software channel. Boom, you get that MIDI information, okay? So one really awesome thing you can do here, let me just play it. Okay, 
So you're like, all right, that snare is not hitting hard enough, for example, right? So we got to find the snare. And it's this one right here. So if I want to select all of these at once, just hit the key in that's corresponding to that note and it highlights all of those notes, okay? And they're averaging on the velocity around 36. So let's say we want to jack those all up and the maximum I can get out of that is 67. If you do all of them at the same time, it's, it's a good thing to do that because there's little variations between each one. But if you sum them out as an average, it will change the all of them. It will change all of them, right? So now it sounds like this. Right? Instead of, where was it? Down here somewhere in the 30s. Oh, I think I missed some snares. I missed these snares. Okay. Let's grab these guys and... Bring them up. They didn't need much. Okay, that's all of them. All right, so this is all of those snares totally maxed out. Right? So you get a slightly different sound out of it. Um, it's just one more way to sort of fine tune the drum performance. Now, of course, you can control the mix from the mixer here if you want, or you can simply drag this back up into that timeline into the drummer line where we were working before if you had like effects or whatever running on that channel. I just wanted to show that to you because it's it's a really powerful feature of GarageBand. You can really, really manipulate these drums with a fine tooth comb if you know how to do it. And now you know how to do it, you guys. So short little video for you today here on Saturday. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope you enjoy everything that I'm making for you here on GarageBand and Beyond. I love making these videos for you guys. I'm super glad that you're learning from them. GarageBand truly is an incredible DAW and I use it all the time. And yeah, you can produce really professional sounding music with it. If you're a songwriter at home, you don't really need anything else. That's my opinion. Worry about your songwriting, worry about your playing. Don't worry about the DAW. GarageBand sounds exactly the same as Pro Tools, it's exactly the same as Logic. It's all ones and zeros. No DAW sounds better than the other one. Uh, it's all about the performance. So get to recording, you guys. Have an awesome weekend, and I will see you on Monday with a Music Monday song. All right, peace and love.